Raw's on 95, man. I'm your host, Seas. We're here in New Orleans, man. Yeah, it feels good, man. Like I said, man, it feels like I just sat down and watched a player just put up 30. It was a, that was like light for her. She, she did a light 30, and they won tonight, too. Very good freestyle, man. And it's, um, it's an honor to be here, honestly. Tapping with this artist, I think she got a lot of potential. She's going to do a lot of big things coming up, man. So who are who, who, who we talking about? How you first of all, how you feel? Let's talk about that. How do you that. feel? How, how are you doing? How are you doing in this I'm pandemic? I'm feeling real good. I'm feeling real good. I'm excited to be here with you guys today. Incognita. <laughs> I mean, incognita, yes. What, how did that name come about? How did you come up with Very unique um, name. I've always been a more inconspicuous person. Like, I keep things real low key. So I tried to pick a name that I felt like would represent me the most. And my, my first name, my real name is Paige. So for a minute, I thought that represented me the most because I write and then right. Paige, whole double entendre. That's but pretty fine. Yeah, yeah. I could have <laughs> went by my first name, but I just decided to go by it. But I still like the name Paige. Like, I still answer. That could be an album. So, album of course, name. it's Paige. Yeah. Turn to the right page. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we like, to, um, we like the stories of the independent young artists that's making their way into the industry. I love that. You know what I mean? Um, Let's start from the beginning. Yeah, like we, I, I get excited whenever like artists like you come on the show because this is the time where fans could really see your your client. You know what I mean? It's not easy. This this music thing, everybody knows, it's not easy to make it in or just be able to find a good situation for yourself. And you happen to have a lot of things going on with you right now that I want the independent artists and the crowd in here to catch up to. Um, first and foremost, obviously, artist out of uh, Los Angeles. Um, just let the fans know, you know, real quick, where you from? Our, our fans know where you from. I'm from South Central Los Angeles, born and raised. Uh, yeah, um, grew up there my whole life. And then when I went to college, I decided to come out here to New Orleans. Now talk about the influence that South Central had on you. I mean, South, South Central, well, every, first of all, everybody come to L.A. to be somebody. And it's real colorful, like, when you're there. So... When I was young, I've always had big dreams because that is the environment that I was in. Like everybody having big dreams, people going to LA and being able to complete their dreams. So um, I also grew up in the church, you know? So I was always inspired by words and uh, teaching and edifying and all types of stuff like that. So uh, I dabbled in poetry as a kid and um, I did a lot of spoken word, a lot of spoken word events uh, throughout my city. Um, it's this one conservatory called uh, Fernando Pullum Center in Lamert Park and I did a lot of uh, things there as far as theater and stuff and I think that the theater and um, the access in my community that I've had to arts helped me develop me into the artist that I am today. So, sure. Yeah. I would say you are you give off a complete artist. Yeah. It's good that you got that background. For sure. And even listening to your music too you could kind of hear a well-roundedness and you're not in any box. Like you could rap but you can also musically you can go. You know what I mean? So that's good to you know, that's good to hear, I hear that. Um, I was reading that you you know your mom was a teacher and your pops was a pastor. Yeah, I'm a, a teacher for sure. Everybody in my family is either a teacher or a pastor. Yeah. Yeah. How much of an influence did that teacher pastor combo had on you music? I mean, we was always taught to learn and we was always taught to ask questions and don't be afraid to ask questions. So I've always been a sponge my whole life when it comes to like knowledge and receiving information. So that helped me with knowing what to be able to write about and not having like writing be so simple and like monotone you know? yeah. yeah so Loyola University from yes Lo from talk Los about that so we'll pack. from Los Angeles from, 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 <laughs> from, from California LA. from West Coast mm -hmm. right to the South South like what what made that what how did that conclude okay so I went to this high school called uh, Loxa shout out Loxa um, but I studied theater and uh Honestly, they had they used to have uh, college fair events every year. Mm -hmm. And Loyola came one year. I think it was my freshman year. And they talked about their music industry program. And then I was like, I was hooked on it ever since then. So then my 12th grade year, I was like, this is one of my, my top colleges. Like, my friends is in the crowd. They know, like, this is the school that I had to come to. Like, mm -hmm. if I didn't get into any other school, I didn't care. Like, this was the one I had to go to. But I just felt like um, I'm a big believer in signs. So, like, Everything I started seeing was like New Orleans affiliated, like and being from Los Angeles, you don't see that all the time. I started seeing Saints everywhere <laughs> and like right. gumbo pop ads popping up gumbo. here and there, and I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, I need to definitely go there for all sure. Right. So backtrack because you, you said something very important. You said uh, the program. 
speak about the program. So the program, for sure. The program is Urban Electronic Music Production, which is basically rap studies. It's the first of its kind, and I wanted to definitely be a part of that. Um, here they offer, like, everything that has to do with the, with the music industry they teach you here. We got performance classes. We got theory classes. We got music law classes. Mm -hmm. We got anything you need to be, like, a well-rounded musician or want to go into the music industry. We got classes to, like... Uh, wow. teach us about that and we also have professors that actually work in the music industry wow. as their first job shout so out to you. shout out to shout, to, out. Just, just shout yeah, out to UP yeah, yeah. 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 shout out UP right for sure yeah. um, for he's sure. one of the teachers in the program shout shout out out UP, uh, he man. made it clear his bachelor's of science and hip hop and R&B so hip hop and R&B that's fire yeah that's dope that's super dope hearing that you know I know a lot of kids now it's such a difficult journey to go into the music industry and to turn around and tell somebody yo I do music and then for them not to take you serious. But now you can actually say, yo, I'm going to get my degree in hip hop, hip hop. You know what I mean? So that's when I heard about that, I thought that was phenomenal. I think that's an amazing, you know, it's going to break. It's groundbreaking for me. You know, I haven't heard of it. I never heard of it. I heard people, you know, it's been classic hip hop study. Or like the, the small music school. Yeah, I've heard of it. But like, like for you to get your bachelor's of science in a, you know, music is phenomenal. Yeah. Is, is that what your major is? That is. Yeah. Or, urban electronic music production for sure. Why? How, how has that program been helpful to you so far? Well, when I first came here, I thought I knew, like, how to perform because I came from a theater school. So I'm like, I, I'm thinking I know how to be big on stage, but it's not. it wasn't about that. And UP and Rainey, they had the ensemble class, which is basically where all the artists in the music industry program, they sign up and we do this class and we do, like, covers of songs, our okay. original songs. And we come on this exact stage and we perform it from day one. I came up there and I performed it and I, I did my little thing, but the notes and stuff that they gave me and things that they put into me to like flesh me out to be the artist today and the performer I am today, I don't feel like I could have got that anywhere else. Mm. Yeah. Shout out to yeah, yo, shout out to you, shout, out, yo, yo, shout yo. out to Rainey. It's dope to see, you know, uh, um, you said it earlier how if you got a, a good team around you. Right. Not only a good team, but you in a program that fully supports what you do. It's important for yeah, dreams, man. I think that's amazing. Um, you you have a you know you have a lot going on right now with you as far as you know being signed, being independent, all the stuff that we hear that's going on right now. Um, it's no surprise to me that labels are you know looking out to look for you and being able to give you a situation. Um, talk to me about your process when it comes to being signed um, currently. So. Well, can you be a little more specific on you that are, question? You are signed. Yeah, I am right? signed. I'm okay. signed to a radio in Atlantic. So, um, I mean, my process with that, um, what I love about radio specifically is it's a um, it's a small label. We got a, a lineup of maybe three, three, maybe four artists. Yeah. Um, and, you know, everybody is very hands-on well, with each of the artists. And um, I'm working with people that look like me. Yeah. You know, I'm working right. with black women. I'm working with people of... Um, of color and I love that because I feel like everybody uh, kind of get like the direction we going into and um, also radio the head of radio is Issa Rae yeah. so and she's also from Los Angeles so I feel like it was a full circle moment for me to be able to sign with them that's yeah. wonderful I, now how did that I know Issa Rae she um, the story goes back to her the way she you know came up with the radio she wanted to put LA female MCs and just talent overall on she wanted to create a situation where she did the partnership with Universal. Now, how did how did Incog how did you play? How did you come about in this in this whole situation with her finding? How did that happen? Um, I know that I was Atlantic had reached out to me, and then I think through Atlantic Radio got into the conversation, and Radio had reached out to me, and I had actually got on a phone call with Issa and the other um, president of Radio Bononi. And we just had a conversation about, like, what it's about, what I expect, mm -hmm. what I want. And then, you know, it just felt good. It was mm -hmm. real feel good. So, yeah, it was up from there. That's what's up. Yeah. Shout out to Issa Rae, man. Shout I'm, out Issa. She sure. was in D.C. yesterday, man. I wasn't there because I'm I'm in New Orleans now, man. I was supposed doing, to go, doing go, go check show, it out. But you know I, mean? I came here for her. You know what I mean? So, so, the, so the details is important to me, Um, I think, because the independent, so many independent artists watch this show, mm -hmm. Um, you know, I don't want you to skip over it because it's important. Um, they didn't just come to you or just call you. You've been putting in your work. You've been putting in your time. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't want you to skip over that. You know, Atlantic calling you. What was it based off of? Where did it come from? Okay, did they so, see something online? 
That's good. Um, okay, so during the pandemic, we all had to go back home. I had to go back home from it was my freshman year of college. And uh, with everybody being home, I just felt like I just had to keep fleshing out work and I had to keep showing people like I could do this. So I think I had dropped my first song, Clap Clap, um, coming right out of the pandemic. And then on Instagram, I had posted a lot of Instagram freestyles and that started getting traction and people started seeing that I could actually rap and write. I started doing shows, local shows around the area. And um, yeah, that was really that. I was really just putting in um, freestyle and Instagram work and Man, and doing what I do, yeah. So, you know, we're in an era of uh, social media and things going viral, a lot of independence going on. So I know you speak, you spoke a lot about why you like the label. Is that kind of why you decided to sign as opposed to doing the independent route? Because we see a lot of successful independent artists mm-hmm. um, that operate very successfully through yeah. social media and the internet and mm-hmm. stuff. I, don't, um, I decided to sign because I know it take a village. Like, I was raised like that and I don't mind a little help. You know what I'm saying? I know I don't know everything. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I know what I want in my life and I know exactly what type of artist that I want to be. But I also know that when you got people in the mix that care about you and see your vision clear as you too, mm-hmm. it can help. You know, sometimes things be a little too close to face for me to be like, oh, mm. this is good. Sometimes I need other opinions and I'm humble enough to be like, uh, I want that. You know, I want people in my in my energy, in my area helping me with my craft and what I eventually want to be. Mm. Do. Because I understand how, you know, before your label situation, there is a team that was there before. For sure. Sometimes structure. it's just you and another person and you call it a team. It, the grind starts out real humble. You know, it's just you and the person next to you that believes in what you do. Um, I know you probably went through that process where it was just you and your team before Atlantic got involved, radio sure. got involved. What did that team look like for you? And then how did it change when you got signed with uh, Atlantic? So I met my team here. Um, my team is made up of students from Loyola Fine. or they are uh, around the city. So my manager, Kobe, he was also in that hip-hop ensemble class that I mentioned earlier. And um, the night I performed, he called me to his dorm, like, let's make something work. And we have just right. been talking and talking about business ever since then. But ever since then, it's been like, um, the, pro- the group is called Structure. And that's what literally it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything is always in order. He's helped me kind of put uh, structure to my right. chaotic vision. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely appreciate that. Um, we had some... We had different plans, but you know how things change once different um, different entities get in the mix right. and we start talking. So, yeah. That led up to the deal. Now, how did, did anything change for your small team, or group, group of structured squad that, that went into the label situation? What Did anything change to you? Did anything come added on or did you guys continue the same way you've been you operating? Did you hit the ground running? Yeah, we just hit the ground running. If anything changed, it changed for the better. Like, we just became stronger and yeah. smarter and just learning. We continue to learn every day. All right. Let's talk about the creative uh, part of your music and the create just your creative side of what you do. Um, so you did do the spoke. You spoke spoken about the word. past and spoken word. How does that have an influence? How you make music? Uh, because I feel like, honestly, as a poet, um, a lot of my writing is um, stream of conscience. And it's mm. me really wanting to tell a story and me wanting to be really visual and stuff. So I think spoken word had an influence on that because when you're doing spoken word, you got to have a lot of energy. You got to like really make people feel the hard hitting stuff that you're mm. saying. You got to have that structure. You got to have that cadence. So that off bats was a solid foundation for me to go into rapping. I used to do spoken words over instrumental. And then somebody was like, why don't you just rap? Yeah, I'm like, that's a good idea. <laughs> that's basically about it. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I mean, I, I like something you said. Like you said, tell a story. Mm-hmm. So that's basically the vision of this platform. We allow uh-huh. people to come up here and tell their story mm-hmm. and provide an outlet for them to express themselves, whether that's, you know, through their raps or, you know, they might speak on experiences they had. So I like that you said that. Yeah, it, sure. it aligns with the vision for sure. And, and, the storytelling, it, it, it definitely aligns. It's, uh, I'm, I feel like my next uh, project that's coming out, the playbook, is telling the story. It's telling my story from, you know, um, how I was a kid and how I grew up and how it influenced maybe my love life and how I'm living now. And I hope people get the message behind that, too. Right. And I think that's important. Obviously, being able to tell the story in your music, I think that's super important so people dive into who you are. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 
um, creative wise, uh, how how well involved is your label? They let you rock as far as like being creative or yeah, for sure. Up? They they definitely let me uh, rock. They definitely hear all, all my ideas. My ideas could be big. They might be like, okay, like let's do this, <laughs> let's this a little step bit. At a time. Or I might just say something like slight, and they'd be like, oh, we can let's yeah. let's live in that. So uh, they've always just helped with my ideas, honestly, and I've always had like free range as to what I want to do. You know, as long as it, it's in the power to be done. Yeah. So what what's next for you? What's next? What's next is this playbook EP. I'm trying mm-hmm. to push. I, I want everybody to be able to hear it. I want people to get um, a lesson from it. And I want people to just enjoy it. And I want it to be the start of what people know Incognita for. I can do bars. I can spit right. and stuff. But I also have that duality side of me where I like to have fun. And right. I want to connect with the people like that. So I just want it to be an overall experience and an overall um, unification. A moment. Bro. Yeah, a moment. For sure. There you go. Now, the playbook... Um I always ask I like to ask newer and young older and younger artists that's in the industry this question um hip hop has saved a lot of people lives you know done so much and changed lives so many artists lives so many platforms have gained from it so many people so many brands culture vultures all different type of people have come into this industry and took from it I always like to ask the newer and the, the older and the younger what do you bring to, to industry? What do you bring to hip hop? I bring duality. I bring. Um, I'm not. I don't. I'm not going into this just as I do this one thing. I feel like I want to show people all sides. I want to connect with all types of people. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to work on all types of music. So I feel like I'm just bringing something fresh and raw, and I'm. I feel like I'm bringing the experience mm-hmm. for the most part, like something for people to take and be like, ah, this makes me feel refreshed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In the third person, who's uh, just to stay in there? In the third person, who's incognito? Incognito is an experience. I hate to keep using that word, but that's 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 how it is. It's it's she's a feeling. She's mm. a she's big. You know she's what I'm saying? She's five. She a vibe. So, yeah. yeah, incognito a storyteller. What do platforms like this mean to you? Why are platforms like this important? I believe that platforms like this is important because um, it's able to put spotlight on artists that people may not have heard of. And um, it shows like the nation just what what's new and what's fresh. And I just I believe in like connections and uh, I believe in uh, I believe in. uh, Yeah, I believe in connections and I believe in uh, this platform because it. I, I like that it brings a spotlight on new artists and stuff. So yeah. And to yeah. add to add to that right, too say, as well, um, <clears throat> you know, I think you got a lot going on in terms of how you put stuff together in terms of you know the playbook and you know everything that goes into that. You in the studio, how you roll it out, all of that stuff. Sometimes it's as basic as coming up here and spitting a freestyle. Right. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people get excited to see you come and just come and rap. You see what I'm saying? And, mm-hmm. You speak about all of the, the parts, the moving parts that make a machine go. I think a lot of people kind of overlook, you know, you just come up here, people get excited about seeing you in this type of element. So it's important. And then Bars I-95 fans love story, good storytelling. Good storytelling. The ones who could come up here and really love be genuine. Story. I was telling your team on the phone that this platform, the ones who really come up here and tell it like their true story, those are the episodes that fans go crazy, see crazy shares for it. But I really, truly believe this one of the episodes the fans going to like. Um, y'all going to enjoy her freestyle because, you know, she she got that sound. I was telling you earlier, she's cut from the, you know, the Rhapsody, the Boron Hill. She's come from yeah, that show. soul, poetic, you know, being able to paint yeah. a picture and really tell a story vibe. And then you can hear it on her voice. So even your energy, like I could, you know what I'm saying? I could, I could, I could tell, but, you know, playbook. Um, what went into that? How much How much went into creating Playbook? How long have you been working on uh, I've been working, I should say, I've been working on the Playbook since the beginning of the pandemic. Like, mm-hmm. some songs that's on there I made at the beginning of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And um, it was so many times I had to shift tracks in and out, in and out, uh, so I can get the specific story that I wanted to tell. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, a lot of hard work, a lot of time went into it. A lot of, like, uh, I had to learn how to humble myself sometimes during this. And I had to learn how to, like, remove myself from the situation and just look at the overall goodness 
of what I have and what I'm trying to do. So um, the playbook was a long process, but I'm happy that it's now fleshed out and it's now mm. done and uh, able to be, you know, given to the public. Is it an EP or is it a full album? It's an EP. It's seven tracks. Seven tracks. Yeah. Okay. Any any features? Any, oh, you want yeah, to say that? Yeah, uh, I feature um, my homie Tundra and then okay. I got the now. So, yeah. So, so. Um, do you want to tell the fans on, on a date or do you guys don't have a date yet? Or oh, yeah. We, gonna... The date of the playbook is April 15th. April 15th. April 15th. That's fine. So by the time, I don't know, by the time y'all see this, it may have been right, already. Right, it's not right on there. Right on there. But um, so... Uh, <laughs> Need me to do a drop, <laughs> let me know. You know? Yeah, facts, facts. If, so as far as being a student, right? Because our job is to be able to highlight your story. Mm -hmm. And that's important to us. These are not just freestyle episodes. It's it's a specially curated episode to tell your story. And you being a black young queen, college student, MC, artist, musician, um, what has that been like as a college student? Your 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 experience and your process has been like as a college student that's a rapper, all the all everything like that J. Can Cole. Yeah, so how does that been for you? Um College, honestly, it has been the biggest learning lesson of it all. I've learned how to balance. I'm still learning how to balance and I'm learning how to prioritize and schedule and put things in more of a, um, you know, in more of a conformed way. So I, I, I college has been more of a, a, a challenge, but I love to continue to learn. I feel like I have to be here, especially because I right. started here. And the year that the urban electronic music production start, that first year, I was one of the First students involved in it, so I just feel like I have to come out here, and finish it, and really deck it out, and it just show um, really dedication. That's what I just want to represent. Yeah, J Cole has a story. You know, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with it. him being a college student. You know, going to St. John's at a time where nobody didn't really know who he was, and the night he was signed, he was, I guess, he was signed to hold. Yeah, he was. He was in jail. He got yeah. locked up, but still was a college student about to uh, graduate. The reason why I'm asking you is because you have a genuine story where you're going through the same process. You know, you're signed right now. Um, you have a great situation where, you know, the Sprays brand is involved and you're still a junior, right? You're a junior in college. You plan on finishing out. Uh, what is that? What is that thought process? Like, did they, did, has that hit you to a point where it's just like, yo, know, this is what's happening to me right now? Honestly, it, it, it really hasn't hit me. I'll just take Day by day, yeah. for real. Yeah, I just let things come how it comes. I say, say la vie. Honestly, yeah. I, it, it is what it is. I'm taking my blessings as it comes. Everything's a learning moment. So, yeah. yeah. Now, your pops is a pastor. Your mom's a te teacher. How, how how have they been taking all this? Oh, they are very supportive of everything, yeah. especially my father. He yeah. loves he loves this whole thing. He loves, he's always loved reading my writing. And, yeah, um, yeah he's always just been supportive. Uh, my mom, she's very supportive, too. Uh she know what she know about music, so she can get into it as much as she can. But every, I got a good um, support system all around. So, like that. Like that. Who's, no. been, who's been your um, musical influence? Give me three names who's been your musical rap influence. Andre, Luda, and Lauren. It's tough. Luda. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. If you got a, uh, if you got a bench cut. Play uh, hit his one guy, of those bro. three. I always got to do that, right? <laughs> if you got a bench cut, a play sorry, one of those three, you got it. Who would you? How would you line it up? Who would you? Who would you? Got? You talking about Raiden from one start bench cut? You got to start somebody. You got to cut somebody, and oh, you got to okay. play somebody. Um, I'm starting Andre. Okay. Ah. Got to cut Luda. I have to. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Luda. But Shout out to Luda. Yeah, I love Shout Luda. Luda. That's I my boy. Love. Shout out to Luda. But you can't, man. You can't, can't cut Lauren. Can't, can't cut Lauren. But that's crazy. Lauren. Shout out to Luda. But I put um, three stacks as the starter for sure. For sure. So, yeah, I can hear the, can hear the influence. Yeah. Definitely. Now, has the South had a an influence on you? Being from LA, traveling to the uh, to the South, it's a different vibe out here. Yeah. Even, even driving through these streets is completely different. Mm -hmm. It's taught me to slow down. Yeah. For sure, being a city kid and a city girl, um, I'm always moving fast and stuff. So, come down here in the south, time move a little slow. You're able to like reassess what you're thinking and stuff. So, it's definitely taught me to 
slow down and just live in the moment and live. And it's like it's not a lot of hospitality down here. So yeah. it's told me to smell more too. That so. was a good thing. Yeah. So like it. Like it. Well, you know, we came down here to cover your story and I think this is important. We all gonna continue to follow your story as you do what you do. Um, every project that you drop, I'm gonna check in with your management. I'm gonna check in on you because again, we don't just invite artists on this show. These are artists we personally co-sign. That's why we're emotionally connected to every single episode. It means a lot to us. So your brand, we're gonna keep an eye on it. And we can make sure we tap in every now and then. You will come back on the show again sure. with some new bars, a new project, etc. But yes, you know, looking you forward got, to it. Yeah, you got all full support now. Before we sign off, you know, is there anything you want to let the fans know? You want to let the people at home know? What's going on with you? Um, yeah, I got a new project coming out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pushing that, man. Go <laughs> listen to the playbook April 15th. Um, and yes, yeah, two times. It's time to play. I'm incognita from South Central LA, and I'm so glad to be here with you guys. I thank you so much for coming out here and um, doing this with me. Much yeah. love. Much love. Appreciate everybody's been tuning in, man. This took a 15 hour flight for us to put together. I'm just throwing that out there. Have a know. How much us. this means and is important. I was on Bourbon Street yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> he was. I was still in the airport. So um, appreciate everybody's been tuning in. Make sure y'all tap in um, for reasons like these type of artists. This is what we do on this show. Skills over politics. We stand for that. It means bring your pen game, not your name. You can't pay sir, your way to get sir. on this show. No, sir. No, sir. You, you, you know, your, your grandma, cousins, your, your grandma, your they can't get you on this show. Nobody could call any of us and try to Labels can't call us and say, hey, we offering you. They tried. We offering you this. The only way you could get on this show is your talent. And we appreciate you joining us. Much love. Much Thank love. You. Signing out. Subscribe now.